Okay, day 70, no Braverman. Um, I just wanted to comment about uh, just this is more feedback to all the people who are contributors, and thank you very much again for all the great contributions uh, that I've been getting. Um, one of the things that I really want to stress is that this whole system of, of Hillary kind of ordering, you know, the Muslim Brotherhood to, to topple countries, this is not new to Hillary. Uh, this has been a CIA thing for a long, long time. Iran country, you can go back in history, uh, going all the way back to the Dulles brothers. <clears throat> and, you know, a lot of uh, uh, the only thing that Hillary really adds to this is she just kind of ups the ante a little bit. Not much even. You know, she ups the ante to the Stinger missiles. But actually, Brzezinski used the Stinger missiles with the CIA in with Osama bin Laden in Afghanistan. So... That really isn't kind of a, too much of an up the ante. Only the Muslim Brotherhood going to 32 countries, you kind of lose control of it. And when it goes to that many countries, then you now have the danger to civil aviation, to Europe aviation and uh, U.S. aviation um, and all over the world, I guess. Um, this sarin gas here with the morale, that's probably where she just decides to up the ante. Now, you're going to, or a lot of people are going to say, well, Churchill used, you know, poison gas in Iraq in, in uh, 27 or 28 or whenever it was to clear land for oil uh, exploration. And people are going to say, well, Bush used sarin gas through an intermediary, uh, Saddam Hussein, uh, at, in Halabja. And I can't remember what year it was, 89 or whatever, <clears throat> through Reagan. I think he did it, uh, proxied it through Reagan. Anyway, um, again, the difference here is the massive quantity that ended up in Syria. And when you start moving it around to a brotherhood that can, it can now move without, um, you know, without your knowledge. You don't know where this is going. So the Churchill example and the Bush example were fairly contained, and they were doing it through a government proxy. This is... Uh, Brzezinski kind of broke the mold going through uh, tribes with the Mujahideen in Afghanistan. Um, but no one has ever done this, you know, kind of the tribes with the, with the um, sarin gas before. So I just want to get just kind of comment that it's just not really that unusual, this, this thing, hiring a private, you know, mercenaries and so forth. The CIA has been doing that a long time. Um, it's just the kind of upping of the ante. And it's really the same thing with the with the uh, brownstone operation. I mean, if you think about it, it's much easier to control countries in NATO uh, through you know filming people having sex with you know people who they shouldn't be and using that to extort and get bribes and, and get donations is a lot better than you know all out war, tank warfare, and lots of people getting killed and so forth. So the people that are behind this actually think. Hey, this covert operations is a lot better than the overt war. So, and the the cool thing about uh, covert operations is you get the money directly every year. Uh, you know, it comes with the uh, you know the signing of the uh, you know reupping for NATO in the case of NATO and in the U.S. You get it when NDAA is signed. So, <clears throat> this just a gift that keeps on giving. The uh, as far as this, uh, these donations go, as opposed to war, you know, if the person who's getting, giving you the money loses, then you're, you're out the money. And she's probably again, just going to say, Hey, I just upped the ante. I just ratcheted it up. Kids have been used for a long time. I mean, I think George Bush kind of was the first one to start getting into using the kids in the, um, brownstone type operations. Um, <clears throat> so really, I mean, Hillary just says, I'm going to just turn up the volume. Because I want more money, so I'm going to turn up the volume on the operations. So I'm going to go with 40 kids rather than, you know, where it may have been like Franklin thing was only probably six or eight kids. I can't remember how many. So I know that kind of is, sounds horrible, but it's it's probably her perspective is that nothing I'm doing here is really that unusual. I'm just getting more money out of it, so I'm a more efficient business person. Um, if you can see that angle, um, and here again. Um, you know, Hillary is more of an innovator in terms of how the kids are getting rounded up. Now, remember, I didn't want to report on this. I just kind of got forced into it by all this great research that these folks were doing on the pizza thing. I wanted to go more to this direction, talking about the Middle East contractors and how they were, you know, aligned with the Senate and oil kind of investment clubs, you know, like the Biden thing and so forth. 
uh, or the McCain or, or Graham, Lindsey Graham thing. Um, but it's, but if, in this sense, she's going to say, hey, I was the one who came up with this microfinancing. I was the guy, I was the one who found Eunice that was able to control this population, which before I didn't know where they were. Now I've got a GPS company that, that can track all these people. That's much more efficient fleet management, if you will. And um, I have a way of getting them uh, money to reward them to do what I want to do on a, you know, wherever they go on a minute by minute basis. So if they give blood, I can give them five dollars. If they, you know, if I want to do blood mining or if they want to do prostitution, I can get them the money. Or if they want to, you know, pay their uh, loan back at one hundred ninety five percent interest, I can do that. So again, I think she's going to say with Kissinger here, she's going to say, "Hey, this was an innovation." You know, and I'm sure in like in the private parties, um, I'm sure that's their attitude. So um, here again, uh, I, I don't want to belabor this point. I just want to say that as far as the research goes, keep the cards and letters coming. You're doing great uh, as far as getting this out to the journalists as well. Um, if you haven't seen a lot of episodes, I, they, people have been asking me, make a simple video, which not so many moving parts and pieces. And then other people have ob objected and said, um, you know, how could any conspiracy be this massive? Well, um, it's kind of like if you'd, you know, around the turn of the century, last century, if you came from Africa and visited the U.S. and you would see, you know, cars everywhere and you'd see gas stations everywhere, okay? First gas station you'd saw, well, that's unusual. You know, the car stop in there, they get the gas and so forth. You know, uh, you'd travel around a bit and say, hey, this is not a mass conspiracy. This is just a distribution network. After a while, you'd get the idea. And it's the same with the CIA. These individual brownstone operations, like the one here in New York that, that they ran for, that Epstein ran for these contractors coming to the Council on Foreign Relations, it's just another, it, to them, it's, a, it's just another uh, gasoline station. You just set them up everywhere. And that way you control everything that's going on. So it's just, just like uh, having a steering wheel on a car. You know, that's how they look at having a brownstone in a country. So um, you're going to find that, again, from a control point of view, this is why uh, DFS, through the CIA, uh, helped uh, Slim's uh, brother take control of Mexico first. Same idea with the cell phones and then bringing in the cell phones. You have, you know where all your pieces are. You know where your enforcers are. You know where your drug runners are. You know where your gun runners are. And it's a beautiful system. And then they, they worked that out. They st the Clintons actually started way back when, and George Bush, way back uh, in Mexico City. Um, and that's where he's from, um, from, well, Lebanon originally. And then uh, all of his work has been done in Mexico City. But that's where the CIA headquarters for listening station was for all of Central and South America. You remember the Watergate burglars all came from uh, Mexico City. So this is just a continuation of what they used to call the landline business. So, and as a matter of fact, Tel, Tel Mex was mostly landlines when uh, uh, Slim bought it for a song for no money down for 20% of the value. And then he moved into cell phones. Cell phones offered that ability to kind of track your, your assets as well as, yeah, the whole enterprise, like a, almost like we do fleet management now with GPS. So Hugh Sinclair, and this is why I go to the people on the ground. Hugh Sinclair reported this. You know, Monica Peterson reported this. You know, Serena Shim. All these different pieces that I'm talking about are not my own re original research. I'm just repeating the people who are actually on the ground for a period of years, for t uh, like 10 years, versus a person from Washington who came in and flew into Haiti and took a few pictures and then left the next day. Okay? So... Um, Again, these folks all in, involved here, the two CIA directors, Morrell, he's going to say, hey, get off my back, George. Um, you know, we've been using poison gas a lot. You know, we've used it here, 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 and here. Um, that's fine, but if the evidence is presented, I think it's my duty to say, hey, you know, this was, you know, against the Geneva Convention. This should go to the world court. The people who have had murdered relatives, either in the sex trade or, you know, as far as the countries we've toppled, should be able to go to the world court and sue the, uh, the Clinton Foundation. This, this is a direct Clinton Foundation operation here. So, um, and this, this again is the beginning. This is the beginning, right? Or Popovich is the beginning of a topple. This is the middle. 
where, you know, you've got people like Newland, you know, Victoria Newland uh, handing out the cookies and at night, you know, uh, figuring out who's going to die. And then this is the end where you got Biden, you know, cash, and his son kind of cashing in on the oil play. So Syria is the same thing with Wolsey um, and Larry Summers, et cetera. So Genie Energy. So there it is. There's the steps. We've, we've gone over them many times. This is how you do the operation. What What's the big deal? You know, Osprey. There's been other ones. I mean, if you look at the Cuban Missile Crisis, you're going to see front companies, cutout companies. So, again, or just a repeating a repeating pattern. So I'll finish on this last slide here with the, the FBI. Um, I haven't seen any um, movement at all. Even with the FBI crackdown, McCain's FBI crackdown, um, I haven't seen any movement at all by the FBI trying to publish any more. Uh, so they're just standing firm like nothing happened. With the Monica Peterson thing, no comment, no comment by Obama on Obama, uh, Monica Peterson. Uh, so this is just like pretending like Haiti didn't happen. You know, this the Haiti group have gone every two months for since last year, 2000, or 2015, beginning in June, January. They protested every two months in front of the Clinton Foundation. Zero, zero press coverage. So that's it for today. I just wanted to say that I think Hillary's just adding to the ante.